Welcome to the In The Spotlight Radio Show TV series and today we have the pleasure of interviewing one of our national footballers who has gone on to greater things and his name is Julian Wade and I felt you know that this young man is in Dominica at this time actually we're very fortunate to have him today because he's actually leaving Ireland by tomorrow um, but I, I thought there are things that we need to know about this young man what he's up to what he's been up to and so we were able to squeeze it in a very tight weekend um, this interview with with Julian Wade. So thank you for being with us Julian and welcome everyone. Let me just give some acknowledgements here to some sponsors who have agreed to support us in this effort. Win big with flow. iPads, smartphones, staycations, breakfast fed tickets, data, and over $15,000 in cash. Activate a 3, 7, or 30 day prepaid combo plan. Pay up your bill. Switch to flow. Bundle up for your chance to win every day. Bundle now and get a smartphone for free. Switch now. Our thanks to the Insurance Company of the West Indies, protecting the Caribbean for over 50 years. Click, call, or visit for your quote today. Josephine Gabriel and Company Limited, agents for Barefoot Wine, Twapita Water, and Heineken Beer. We forward the Freight Master, faster and reliable shipping to the islands. Flo Dominica, enjoy six times more speeds and 50% off mobile when you bundle. Kalaloo House and the Great Old House for the finest dining in Dominica. And Media Links. Media Links is Media Links. Us, as I mentioned before, Julian Wade. I think you go by Juju. Yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> Juju, thank you so much for agreeing to speak with us today. We know that you were here for the CONCACAF series um, that actually just took place this week. And um, you're actually leaving soon, but I appreciate you making the efforts, you know, to be here and to speak with us. So, hello and welcome. Yes, welcome. Um, thank you. And um, thank you for, Danny, for having me. I'm I always follow your show. I hope I can live up to <laughs> the quality that you have been delivering on your shows. Um, and obviously, I'm good day to listen to the as well. So, thanks for having me. Again. Oh, it is my absolute pleasure. Um, Juju, first of all, where the name Juju came from? Oh, <laughs> the that's... nickname Juju. Oh, yeah. So, it was actually, actually, well, from what I remember, I am actually had that from, um, I don't know if you know Eddie. Eddie Bruni. Um, Somebody in my yard, mm -hmm. and he, 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 um, as far as I remember, he was the first person that I, I remember calling me Juju, yeah? and then something that is stayed. I actually was very young, so I, I haven't got too much, um, history or any too much information. I just remember him calling me Juju, and I remember because my mother doesn't call me Juju, she, she doesn't, so yeah, I think that's the first person I remember calling me. 
me to drive. I don't know the origin of it. <laughs> I, I assume it's short for Julian, but... I, I, am, I am assuming <laughs> the same as well. Yeah, yeah. And so people just call you Juju as a nickname. Yeah, yes, and they even talk about you as Juju when they're talking in football circles. Yes, they so do. <laughs> I guess it's something that people have gotten a bit accustomed yes. and um, familiar with. Juju, tell us a little bit about you, your personality. How would someone describe you? Okay, that's a good question. Um, I would say Juju is, is what you see. Simple. Um, yes, I think the best word to describe it probably simple. Um, probably simple. Yeah, not too much. Um, I'm not too loud. Um, I'll not be the loudest person in the room. I have my small circle of people that I express myself more around. Um, I, I, I say I'm an introvert, but my wife thinks differently. She always says that I'm an extrovert because of the amount of people that I interact with. But um, I think that kind of comes with you know football and and um, the attention that you get. But I think deep down, I'll, I think I'll just say I'm a single person now. And I like what I like. And I can tell as well that you respectful because we, you were running a little late for the program, for the interview um, this morning. And um, in time, you didn't wait last minute to send me um, a note saying that you were running a bit late. You actually messaged about quarter two, which I think is good. You know, I really did appreciate that. And just your presence, your energy when you came, I, I got the energy of someone who's very humble and easygoing and cool. So that's what I picked up um, <laughs> from you. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've heard, I've, I've heard um, that this, um, those words used on myself before. Um, but I, I would say from my eyes, I would, I, I would just use simple eyes. But I've, I've also heard <laughs> some of those words used as well. So. But thank you for that. Um, so let us, uh, every time I do one of those interviews, I always like getting a bit of a background of the person. Um, you know, where from Dominica are you from? A little bit of, about your lineage, your parents, you know, that kind of thing. So let us understand Juju's background, where Juju comes from. Okay, um, so I come from, um, I live on King George Fifth Street, that's where I grew up, um, in that small yard right next to our agency, I think it's called La Cruz Hawaii. Um, that's one of the, um, I'm not sure we got that name as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a small yard right across the police station. Um, grew up with my... Well, my mother, Cecilia Sanderson, um, she I grew up with her and my brother, to be honest, um, single parents, um, my father lived abroad, and my father um, originally from Fonkoli, and he, he lived abroad, I think he lived, yeah, he lived in Montra, so it was kind of single parents, I mean, he always kept in contact and you know, stuff like that, and did what he had to for a period of myself growing up, but growing up, I was with my mother, she did or what she had to do. Um, we grew up in a very close yard. Um, everybody who lived in the yard was very close. Um, and a lot of people that you see around, um, Sharon, the Edwina, the, that's Juliana, all those people. Are the, family, yard people. the yard people. <laughs> yes. um, Iona, all of them. And it was just like a big family, I would say. So I, I, growing up, I never felt like I was, you know, like a you know, single parent. I, yes. that, I always thought I had a big family. Yes. So. And even in terms of my, my extended family, my grandmother, all like everybody passed through the yard. So it was it was I never really noticed that I was single parent. Only when I went to school and I started here and I wanted to be a family, extended family, mm -hmm. single parent. That's when I really started to notice the difference. But yeah, it was just the yard, um yeah, in a small What one was bedroom. it like growing up there? It was happy, I was happy. You were happy. I was happy, yeah. Um again I only realized what I did not have once I started to go to school, you see different things people have and decide to compare. Um, when you decide to look at more TV, you start to realize, oh, but I don't have that. But growing up, I, I never thought I was lacking anything. I never thought I was poor in any way. But when I didn't have a reference point, then I realized, yes. oh. Yes. So I did not grow up with the most money. I did not grow up with the most facilities. I mean, I played barefoot most of the time. Um, I don't know if you know the yard, but it's pumped all around. Oh. So a lot of those schools and <laughs> and um, yeah, um, we didn't have wind balls and I mean plastic bottles for the yard. So yeah, I grew up humble. Um, in terms of your your um, education, um, where did you go to school? Through the school journey. Okay, so I went to Miss Wilkins right on um, Harrow. I'm not a higher one, um, Virgin Lane, sorry. Um, and then I went to SMB, 
where I really started to play more football. We play a lot of football um, at recess time. At that um, time, you had shoes. Yes, but, but you were giving your mother stress. Yes, but she, know. yeah, I couldn't play the shoes. So sometimes I had to take off the shoes. You had to take off the shoes yeah, because I couldn't what, finish the what, shoes. What happened? You'd be finishing the shoes. I would finish the shoes, so I couldn't um, afford to play the shoes. Um, and she'd want me to keep both of the shoes. Right. Um, and then I went to the Dominica Grammar School. Oh, your grammar school, boy. Okay, me too. <laughs> I went to the Dominica Grammar School. And then after that, I went to the Dominica State College. Oh. And yeah, and presently I'm. Yeah, we open campus. We high five on that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we in this, this together. <laughs> All right, wonderful. So Juju, so far, you know, I'm I'm, I'm liking your story, and um, I'm excited because you're gonna have a baby soon. Yes, Tell us about is, that um, and the anticipation. Yes, that is a very exciting news. Um, for myself, um, a lot of people, a lot of even the football used to joke around and be like, uh, once you reach 40, then. <laughs> and I used to obviously laugh at them because obviously they, they, they knew that I was in a proper stable relationship. Um, but for myself, I, I, I knew I grew up. And again, when I started to notice certain things and I was more aware, I realized more the like, importance of being there for, you know, for your children and stuff like that. And I realized that I, I played in different countries mm -hmm. and I was not in the same place. I did long distance for a while. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to be in a position where I probably one country, my child in the other country. So I thought that I would take that step um, when my wife and I were living in the same place mm -hmm. and we were married and everything was how I wanted it to be. I didn't want it to be a Viking, I think I wanted it to be all in. So, so you planned it? So I, you, wanted, I, you wanted it to be a situation where your child could get all the love and attention that he or she needed. And we won't try to pry to see if it's a he or a she. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but although by the time it, oh no, it won't, it won't. By the time it is, um, um, no, baby, we'll still be in tummy. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> but tell us about your wife. Oh, wow, my wife. Just, uh, I, I don't know if you have enough time, though. <laughs> <laughs> Let's but, summarize. Yes, we'll summarize. Um, she is, she is the best woman I've ever met um, in my lifetime. Um, she literally ticks all the boxes that I think that I want in a woman, um, if I wanted in a woman. And she's very intelligent. Oh, she's very, very intelligent. And, and funny enough, <laughs> one of the, that was not one of my boxes. No. <laughs> so that's just bonus. <laughs> bonus. Um, so basically, yeah, she, she's very intelligent. She's very organized. She's selfless, very loving. She, most of this stuff like she does for me, she will not even do for herself. Mm -hmm. She's um she's that kind of person, um very loving her personality, her personality works for me. Mm -hmm. Um and she's very understand I'm, and it's gonna just go on so how long you all were together before you got married? We were together for seven years. Seven years. So and you've been married for how long? I've been married since twenty nineteen, so three years. Three years, so about ten years together. So, three years, ten years together. together. There was something really awesome she did for you. I think it was for your birthday. I saw it on oh. social media. <laughs> yes. Um, I think you all were trying to get, was it an Xbox? It was a PlayStation 5. PlayStation 5. We they were, were trying to get, and then apparently they just couldn't get it. And then you got a surprise. She pulled it out, yeah. Yeah, because we, we, we were actually I trying. I saw you unboxing it. Yeah, we were trying for like almost four to six months to try and get one that long. And we just couldn't get it. But I know she's the kind of person, you know, she's determined and she gets things done, but I was like, you, you're not going to make the PlayStation, like you have to wait for the manufacturer. <laughs> right, right. And we couldn't get it. And she worked and she worked and then she, what she did, she was so smart, she put the the small box, the controller box on the um on the Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. And then she, I was thinking there's no way a, 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 a PlayStation could be in that box. So I, I had my mind on you know a wallet, a perfume. Something of the sort. But then she was I saw it for phone, so I was thinking, obviously no, it's awkward for me because I'm on tape and I, I don't know how to react if it's a perfume <laughs> or if it's like a wall. I, I, I'm like, why? I don't know why she's making it so big. Mm -hmm. And then while she was recording me, she went for another box. And ah, that's when she brought in the bigger yes. box and then I was trying to figure out so that, if that could be the, the controller. And yeah, so she got me good. I she no got idea. you good. And, and it was really awesome just to look at it. How did you feel when you, when you saw that's what it was? I actually lost it because in my mind, so she, she, well, she made the impossible, made, very possible. Yeah. yeah, it was actually impossible in my mind. So that was the most surprising part. 
had no idea. Sometimes, you know, I have a hint, I have a few things I want, and I know she might get one on, on the list, but that one, that one was um, yeah, annoying. That one was special. And she knew how much I wanted. She knew how much you wanted one. But, but <laughs> I always wonder, what is it about those games? Is it a stress reliever? What is it for you guys? It's definitely a stress reliever. And even for me, like, obviously, I'm, I'm away most of the time, so I get to play a lot with some of my friends back home. And I mean, we have like the audio you can speak while you're playing the game. So it's a definitely a stress reliever, and it's just it's like a pastime. It's nice. It's really nice. Okay. Yeah, because I I, I I like my comfort of my house. It's very convenient. Okay. All right. And our baby is due in the next couple of months. Yes. Baby is this one. Yes. So I'm just waiting. I'm <laughs> I'm truly excited for you, and I I, I suspect you're gonna be a great father. Yes, that's the plan. You're looking forward to that. I'm very much looking forward to that. So, just making sure that everything yeah, is in place so that once they become all football, he's on the side. Yes, of course, <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, whatever else that he or she decides, I will support them 100%. Definitely. Okay, so let's talk about what has you here even today, which is football. Yes. yes let's talk about football. Where did it all start for you in terms of football? Okay, so it all started in my nice small yard, um, playing with my friends and stuff like that. Um, you know, I just just love for the game. Um, although my brother always was, he was always on me, my bigger, bigger brother Dalton, he was always on me to do things properly and do the right technique and I'm just thinking, I'm just playing, friend. you know, you just want to enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was always on me, if I if I'd probably score one goal, he'd be on me, I should score two, I should score three, and I'm just thinking, <laughs> He puts you under pressure. Always. <laughs> to one point that actually, Stop playing football completely. Just it almost like just a rebel. They just rebelling against me because I, at one point it was not enjoyable. It was too, too much of a job. <laughs> and I started playing cricket. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> so much. So <laughs> I was in Sharon George's Cricket Academy in um, the gardens. She stood out over the summer. I was doing that so much that I actually got a call up for the under 15 national team. Yeah, we had a tra tra trial in um, Lapworth. Yeah, and then when I I usually played it win ball and then it was pop ball and it was moving too fast for me. So that's when I knew my time for cricket was over. <laughs> but, but yeah, I started there and then you know I played football for the, um, my schools and stuff like that. Started to get a bigger recognition, scoring goals, stuff like that. And then um, I went on to I left Dominica. Mm -hmm. yes, that's, before, you, before you left Dominica. At what point during the times you were playing for your schools and so on did you realize, hey, I might have a knack at this thing? When I started to watch football on television, so my brother always used to look at Manchester United play and stuff like that. And I started to watch it as well, just out of curiosity, if anybody really to watch. And I started to see how they, how they would play and I tried to pick up something and think, oh, I could do that too. So I just started to watch and I was thinking, but I could play there as well. Like, I was just thinking I could, I could play, and then I, I went to the national team, and I and I played on the 14, and I realized I can I'm up the, the level the others are, so I'm just thinking, and the fields are a lot nicer, so I'm just thinking <laughs> I want to play on those fields. I want to play against strong opponents because it's almost like you get almost validation in, in your ability because you realize that these are so-called better teams and so better, and then you're competing against them. So that gave me kind of confidence. That gave me more confidence, and then I realized. I think that's something that I want to do. Okay, alright. And then at some point, at what point did you leave Dominica? You were just about sharing with us that you left Dominica. Yes, so I left Dominica in 2009. I mean, it was such a difficult situation that... Um, so my father um, lives in Montreal, as mm -hmm. I mentioned, and he was always asking me to come to Montreal to join the force. He has a job, job To opening. join the force? Yeah, the police force. force. Oh boy. And I was always putting it away because I, all I knew of Montreal was a big ball game. That's all I knew. So I was always thinking I don't want to go, I don't want to go. And then when we, when we were done with high school, started calling and stuff like that, he invited me again. That probably is for the fuck of him. Um, mm. But my mother never wanted me to go as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was thinking about it. Yeah, my best friend Travis Woodman was there at the time. When my mother mentioned it because she just came on the, on, on the call with my father, he was like, yeah, we could do it. I was like, Okay, well, if you do it, if you do it with me, then you do it. Your friend, my friend yeah. Travis, um, and then we decided to go 
last minute he pulled out, um, so he didn't go. He again. left you hanging. He left me hanging. Oh my. Up to this day, I still have that on him. And then I left. I went on my own because everything else was good. So I went to Monstrat um, to join the force. Um, I did that for three years. And while there, you know, I went to football, you know, football, I went to football, go, started to train with them. And then immediately the, the, the president, um, Vincent Castle, saw me and he realized my potential. And yeah, and with Montreal, there was some, um, um, there was some leeway in terms of um, parentage and stuff like that that allowed me mm -hmm. to play for Montreal. And especially my age, I was um, 19 at the time. So I was able to play for them. And I played a tournament with them and he wanted me to play for Montreal at that point. So I played a bit of football there. And then um, when I was when I reached 20, and I, was, I had to choose um, which country that I had to play for. Okay. When I looked at playing for Montreal, I was playing for Dominic. I realized all my allegiance, all my loyalty was to Dominic. So of course. I am. Um, yeah, I chose Dominic. You chose Dominic. I chose Dominic. Okay, I was saying to you online when I was doing a bit of research that I saw that the reason why you came back to Dominica was because there were some changes in FIFA's rules yes. in terms of you probably not being able to play for Montserrat, but you're saying that your decision was actually made based on the fact that you decided that you were coming back to Dominica. Yes, yes. So, based on the FIFA rules, I could not now play for Montserrat unless I had committed to Montserrat. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I'd have to commit to Montserrat, I'd have to for it about Dominic and then get my passport or what I have to do before my child. Okay, okay. But um yeah I decided yeah the problem was Dominica. So did we quit the force and come back to Dominica? Oh yes. Yeah. So <laughs> oh yeah we, we quit the force. Um by the I, way before that what was the experience like being a police officer? Oh <laughs> it was a, a lot of guys um um always make jokes about that. It was an interesting one. Um it was different. I never wanted to be joining the force before that I don't know. Well, I joined because my my friend told me to do it, and I and I was wanted to be in a, a reputable job, mm -hmm. a job um, you know, that um, kind of you know was on another level. So um, I did it to 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 see how I get on and how much I'd enjoy it, and I think it was kind of nice like this now, yeah, and stuff like that. And it was alright. It was alright. It was not too much violence, too much people trying to play with more places, okay. very quiet. Not many crimes, so it was more community policing and prevention. So pretty much that. Um, so I did that for three years. Um, got to know the people. It was a good experience. I learned a lot there, and then I had an opportunity you now to go to um, to the USL with Antigua Barracuda FC at the time. Yes, I went to the in Antigua. I got through. What decision did we make? <laughs> <laughs> it was always going to be football. Yeah, it was always going to be football. Always. And funny enough, though, before, like maybe, I don't ever want to exaggerate, probably like two weeks before I even got the opportunity to go to Antigua, I remember being on the beach, that's in the community, mm -hmm. that's what they call working. And I was just thinking, like, that, I was, you know, just out by myself. I was on a night shift, so it was probably after two, after three, I don't know. And I was just thinking, like, that's not what I want to be for. I mean, it was was good pay, it was good everything, everything was alright, but I knew I wasn't happy. And as I told you, growing up, I was happy. Mm -hmm. So for me, happiness was was that, yeah, stick it, that was what I would measure anything else on. And though everything else was ideal, I was I wasn't happy, and I knew that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't, have, I didn't have a passion, I didn't have a drive for it. And I wanted to do something that I was happy, like, would make me happy, because happiness for me is the biggest thing. And that's when I decided. And actually stayed after free and actually prayed I was like telling God like that you cannot have me um, going through all that football making me score so many goals doing so much and then you have me in the goal so I think that that doesn't add up so I just adding for yeah I actually prayed for that at least let me try even if I fail then mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. be it but mm -hmm. I want an opportunity so at least justify all what I did over the years and I heard about the trial like that I don't want two weeks, no more than two weeks later. And I decided to go and just try, you know. And I was successful. I was successful and then I had to leave the police force. Um, because I had a decision to leave. They were short staffed, they could not let me go. 
and I'm oh. just thinking, well, it's, it's, it's my dream versus security. And yes, I yes. To take that, 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 that would have been a difficult decision oh. to make. Cause... It was, yeah, when we knew it's only six months. Yes. So it was knowing that I have to go that six months and do exact, mm -hmm. make it in that six months. But I still think, from what I'm gathering from you, that you had vision, that you knew more would come out from that six months and the opportunities would continue coming. So tell us about that six months and, and what came out of it. Oh no, that's a very interesting six months mm -hmm. and you'll find out. So I quit the force um, with the assistance of uh, my father showed me um, the ropes and what I should do and how it would be the most you know, respectful way legally and how it should be done properly. Um, I quit the force there and then I was meant to go to Antigua. Now, there was a bit of <laughs> actually politics. Yeah. in that Antigua move because there were how it was at the time and I had some insight based on the coaches that coaches had to submit their list of players that they would want on the team as well as substitution and I mean the, the I'm starting line of all the coaches and yet right. still another player of an Antiguan player in the same position but the opportunity and they did not pay me for that <laughs> so you quit your job yes that you go to Antigua to play football mm -hmm. and you're not picked. I was not picked uh, even after being a starter on literally almost all the coaches' lineups. I was not picked I'm, and I still to this day I don't know the political part. All I know is a striker. Same position from Antigua left in my position. Um, so yeah, so actually was there and they told me that they would they would um travel at my my place where I was staying. And they said that they will contact me by, let's say, 12 o'clock. So I would know if I was leaving on the flight. Are you kidding me? And you know, I, I was there with my back to back waiting from 12, from 11. And I realized it passed so I didn't get the call. I knew the flight was like, I don't know, 2.30 or something. And I waited until 2.30 and not giving up here, just waiting, thinking that there's still a possibility for the flight got delayed. You'll go on another flight. I'll go on another flight. Or something. <laughs> never. And you will never call. Never. I was never At least that. not that day. I was never for that day. And never for this, what happened over the six months altogether. So, that happened. Um, we must that, have been devastated. That, oh, hmm. that day, that day was one of the days where I questioned, but I was just thinking, I quit my job. Wow. And I'm waiting to go on the flight. Everything got organized. I got the opportunity. I made the team. And I didn't go. So, I'm just thinking. You understand, like, what, like what's going on? And I left Antigua, no, that was the hard part, because now I had to go back to Dominica. And during those, that time, I had to use, so I did all I had to do, get my visas, do all I had to do. And I used a bit of my savings and I had to head back to Dominica. And that for me was a hard time because um, I'm just thinking, it's kind of embarrassing now you have to go back in your Dominica and say, well, mm -hmm. you see you, they will mm -hmm. ask a question. <laughs> and I actually stayed stuck from my grandmother for almost a month, yeah. She didn't come down. Almost in hiding. You know, almost in hiding, yeah almost in hiding and after that I got I kind of picked myself up after the month and I'm just thinking because again my my best friend again Travis um, he is also a man of God and obviously we had a lot of conversation he hey, left you down oh yes I always had that <laughs> I always had that on him but we had lots of conversation he was just thinking like like I, I should not not give up yeah not give up yeah I should yeah. try like oh and mind you he, he had no he didn't have another option but he just knew I just not give up yeah and just trust God and stuff like that. And I came across one of the coaches in Trinidad, um, um, Jama Shabazz, and he, I remember that when I played a, a game in Trinidad one time for the Montreal national team, mm -hmm. it was a friendly, mm -hmm. we played against a team of his own. And, and we've not spoken about Trinidad yet, but I suspect just okay. that something's coming up. Yes. <laughs> yes. So when I um, spoke to him, um, he, he, he liked me since from that game. Mm -hmm. Okay, I scored the two goals with two, two, And he always, you know, liked me. And I got his contact, I can't remember where it was Facebook, I can't remember, I got his contact. I know I just reached out, and funny enough, well, or, oh, I don't know, I, I was blessed in that his team was actually preparing for the CONCACAF Champions League, which is a very big tournament. And you know what, he, he said, okay, you know what, if you can get you remembered me, he was like, and he always wanted me, but I never left, and he was like, if I could come to Trinidad, by that Sunday, mind you, it was like Wednesday. That so that time. is after you came back from Antigua? Yes, yes, and okay. I was in Dominica okay. at that time, I yes, reached out yes, to him. Yes. And he was like, if I could get to Trinidad um, by Sunday, I could get like a, was it a two-week or a week? I think it was like a two-week trial, and we would 
see? So I was like, oh, yeah, I have to dream at that point. I have used all, basically all of my money in transactions and flights and uh -huh, uh -huh. so I'm just So you had to pay away? Yes. So I he did. was not going to send you a ticket? No, he wasn't okay. sending a ticket, but they would cover everything else once I was there. Okay. Um, so I'm thinking like, wow, I need to get that. So I reached out to a few people, um, I, I, I won't mention, mm -hmm. um, and I did not get the yes, assistance, the support at the time. And I was at a, yeah, I was at a, but I knew I had to do it. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to two family members and they, they um, agreed to help and I just told them, like at the end of the day, I think it was like, I don't know, I can't remember the amount, but I told them, you give me half, you give me half, and I will go to Trinidad, I will make the team and I will pay, I will pay back by my, within my first salary, first two salaries I'll pay back. Mm -hmm. It was a long shot because then I had no experience of it, I was Dominica playing football. But again, it was just my ability and, and my faith in God, like just knowing that God would have my back. Mm -hmm. And I went to Trinidad, did it to a trial, made the team, and made the team and then, yeah, I got my first salary, I paid them back. You did? <laughs> I paid them back you, with my you, first you, salary. You kept your promise. I kept it, yeah. You paid back. I paid back. First salary, I paid my debt. Mm -hmm. and so you're very grateful to these two people. Oh, if, uh, if it had not been for them, they would not be. Mm -hmm. This? They would not be this because my career kicked off from that um, move because we went to um, Mexico. We had a big game in Mexico against some two KFC, you know, the Giants from Mexico. Um, and it's very difficult to play in Mexico because of the altitude. Mm -hmm. We literally had to go two weeks before and go to Colombia at similar altitude where and, practice. and practice to just get accustomed. Okay, it was so difficult, it was so thin um, to breathe and to get oxygen and stuff like that. That literally our first session in Colombia when we arrived, we literally had to just walk around the beach. And some guys still had those feet from walking around the beach. That's how high it was. That would have been difficult. So we did that, and I, um, I mean, my debut there, I came in as a substitute in like the I don't know, 69th minute or something, and I scored a goal. Oh, <laughs> Our only goal, we, 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 lo we lost. You scored the only goal? goal. Yeah, we lost 3 1 that day. Okay, doesn't matter, yeah. but you scored the goal. <laughs> I scored, so from that, that kind of kicked off my career because not many people around the Caribbean, at least, only Dominic knew about me. And then to see, because a lot of Caribbean, I think I was. I think at the time they said I was 20 something player from the Caribbean to even score against a Mexican team in Mexico. Oh. Many people do not. So you even need some statistics there. Yes, and that's the first <laughs> st st um, statistic I ever got. I was like, oh wow, that's not good. I mean, you just put your name and then kind of blow up on Facebook and went out. And then I got injured, um, unfortunately, um, shortly after, and which did not make me play for a good deal of the season. Oh. Um, so the first season I, I only played like what seven, ten games, uh, seven games or so. Um, I still managed to get like about four goals, but it was nowhere near what I wanted. So I, so I didn't have a very good um, season because most of it was yes. injury. I had a meniscus um, damage, and then I had me for like six months. Wow, that's a long time. Practically the season. Mm -hmm. And then I left um, Trinidad. It was a very good, very very good experience. Um, it was very good, especially at, because I had no previous experience and it was very good. The environment, the professionalism, it really, really um, made me see what it takes and the, the amount of work and the amount of quality players. We had players that were on the street, that national team, that have to be competing against. It was always me trying to push the bar to even keep up because it's coming from a small country like Dominica. You have to work a little harder. You have to work a lot harder just to even meet because these players have these facilities growing up with, so they have their technique. Everything is already they yeah, just at the base. Um, here at the base, so there was a lot, of, a lot of work um, to even keep up. And I did what I had to. Um, I scored when I when I came on. <laughs> I got in my opportunities. And then in 2014, so after the first season, I didn't play too much. Um, the second season came, and then there was some um, issues in terms of um, our sponsor. There was a oil crash. One of our sponsors for oil company. There was some yes, yes, in, in our matters where they have to let go a few players um, on, on loan and you know it's always more difficult to deal with the foreigners because the foreigners come with housing, they come with so the expenses higher and luckily for me I was um, offered the opportunity to go on loan to one um, top team, it was a new team but one of the top team the guy which was sitting at FC and funny enough um, when I got the when I got offered the opportunity to go on loan I didn't want to go 
I didn't want to go. Um, at that time, <laughs> um, we were in Dominica, I remember. Um, Steffi was living in Kudu at the time. And I said I was not going. And she was the person who was I literally cried I was not going. <laughs> that, that's how much I knew. Because I was just thinking, um, I need to develop my career in football in Trinidad and where there's opportunities. And I was thinking, why would I go to Guyana? Um, I don't know what is in Guyana. And I, I was just like, and I'm, I'm, I'm not too much. You're not so, too adventurous. No, I'm not too adventurous. <laughs> no. So I was just thinking, I don't do it. And she convinced me um, after long debates, and then I decided, okay, I'll go. And I left, went to Guyana, and I think that's what made my career even more. Oh, wow. <laughs> even more. So it was a good decision. It was a very good decision. Okay, good job, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very good decision. Um, she had the, 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 the foresight, she had, like, she had decided to see that. For, um, I had no idea. I, for me, I was just that. Even though it meant, I don't know, grinding through, I just thought Trinidad was the place and it wasn't had it climate. Trinidad was one of the best things for my career, in my career, I scored lots of goals, I got the top score for the, um, the league at the time, and we won the league, so that was the that kick of my career um, even more. And then in 2016, I actually went on a trial um, in the UK, who won the team, it was Dagenham and Red Bridge at the time, um, it was a good, good trial period, and um, they came on visas and they had, yeah, so they had changed It's visa. always something. <laughs> they had changed the visa um, restri um, requirements to something where your country has to be the top 70 ranked countries in the world. Oh, and Dominica was not. Uh, <laughs> but not in that, so I did not um, end up getting signed and then I had to, to return. Um, so that was another hard time. Um, and I got another opportunity. There's, there's been so many opportunities, mm -hmm. yeah. Another opportunity um, where I saw. I'm, I've had very few miracles in my life, but I've seen real miracles. And one of them was when I left to go to um, to the UK. So I got an opportunity to go to the UK with an agent. Mm -hmm. He organized everything, told me everything was organized. And I left Dominica, went to the um, to the UK. And when I was, well, before I went to the UK, I was in Barbados. And then when I messaged him in Barbados, you know, just to confirm, he told me that. No. If, I, if I can change my ticket to next Friday and I'm thinking, change my ticket, I'm actually in Barbados on my way oui. to the UK. Mm -hmm. He was like, okay, you know what, um, we'll get something sorted out, so um, just message him when I reach. And I'm thinking, what, what's, going what's going on? It got worse when I had my phone on the charger, my flight got called, and I immediately left because to go boarding, and I left my phone. On the charger. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I left my phone in charger. When I went into the, the plane, I realized I did not have my phone. So I wanted to head back out, but it was a, because of security reasons, I could not leave the plane after coming onto the plane. Mm -hmm. So I had to stay on the plane, and they were telling me that they would get somebody to get it to get you. It to me. And I was there waiting because a lot of people were bored, and I was just waiting, waiting. And then the door closed. And I'm thinking, I'm how are you going to make contact? How am I going to make contact? I have no... My... Everything is in the phone. Everything is in the Everything phone. is in the phone. <sighs> and that is when I... They, they'll actually report. Because I was next to a woman um, named Kande, Kande Roberts. She was actually going to the UK at the time. I did not know her at all. And while I was sitting next to her on the flight, and, you know, we were just talking on the flight, and I didn't tell her anything, yeah? And when I was realized I was about to land in the UK, because if you have no information, I'm even worried for it's like I'm <laughs> on my edge wondering what happened. They will next. send you back. <laughs> they will literally just send you back. And I was there without any form of contact. And then she was like, "We were speaking, and you're just speaking." And then she, God, only God, because I could have sit down anywhere else on that day when I was next to her. And she was telling me that she was going next. Um, she was going to visit her cousin, which just happened to be somebody that Steffi knew and that person that Steffi knew um, actually was willing to have me come to a house while I wait, wait for my phone to come um, well, to, to come to me and that's how I even ended up reaching the UK to, end, <laughs> to do any of that I had no contact so I had to go everything based on what Candy had and she helped me with that it was just so random because 
I could have been any other seat. That's definitely a the miracle. Flight, <laughs> the flight had lots of lots of seats and it wasn't just like one seat. It was like three seats. So I could have been anywhere else. Yeah. I was next to her. Yeah. And that's why I made it look. Did you get the phone? I got the phone like two weeks later. <laughs> two weeks later. I got the phone. Um, she his friend, um, Anya, which I always have. So in high regard for that. She actually accommodated me for the two weeks. For the two weeks? Yep, because all my information, everything was on that phone. So what about the gentle dip? Your agent, making contact with your agent, how were you able to make any contact? I was only, well, I had him on Facebook locally, so okay. when I went to her house, Anya's house, I was able to, you know, send a few messages on Facebook, and that's why I can end up to that. So that was an experience part of my journey, and that was only possible. But otherwise, I don't know how that, <laughs> that would have gone. So, so the, the, remember the agent was asking you to come the following Friday? Yes. What happened with that, all of that then? So what, what, what really happened is I ended up just staying with Anya for that week and then went to okay. trial all right. Friday because apparently he, he didn't get in contact with somebody else. Okay. It's very, very okay. foolish. And that's why I ended up um, doing that. So that was a crazy time as well. Um, and then I, after Guy and I, I, I went back um, because that was like 17. Yeah, so there was some issues with the Federation and my club. <laughs> Return to Dominica and uh, while in Guyana, I, I also have to comment there was um, Junior Forrester, uh, some of the guys in Guyana, Alex Bonbury, they actually had me going to trial in Minnesota and in Sporting Kansas, which I'm very grateful for. And that's just for them seeing me in the league and just realizing my potential and they offered to give me that trial. That too didn't work. Um, and again, I was not a Guyanese, but they took me as one of the people and they gave me the opportunity. I was always um, grateful for that. And I went back to Dominica and, and I was with the national team at the time because we were preparing for some competition. And then we had a friendly match against Waterloo. And I played the match there. We we drew 2-2. Two -two. I spotted the ball and then Whoa. yeah, one of the um, <laughs> one of the um one of And then one of the managers, club managers up there, um, for Solidarity School there, he noticed me, the president, um, Philip Pope, he, 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 he recognized me and immediately, directly after the game, he had a conversation with me, um, I took the first interest, and um, myself also, Chandler John Quinn, because we did the really impressive promotion for we went to Gordon, based on that was a good opportunity, so I'm playing Gordon, we played there for two years. Okay. Very, very good experience. Very, very nice. I mean, they took me from French, Porsche, everything, and they were very, very, very nice people as well. So I got to live in Guadeloupe again for two years. So got a taste of some of the Caribbean countries, and, and it was all positive experiences. And, and all different countries have different styles, and different formations, different tactics, and a lot so of adjusting. You've got different experiences oh, yes. that Every, you had to adjust a lot. A lot. Because each, each team has their own style of play. Mm -hmm. And then when you bring that a bit broader, different leagues have different style of play, and then you have different countries style of play. So, and different cultures, you have a lot of adjusting. And yeah, I just did my did my best. Mm -hmm. Came home when I could, taught basic family. Um, and at one point, I realized I would organize step was step basically just managing the entire scene, letting me know what I should do. Even in terms of my marketing, mm -hmm. in terms of how I manage my page, in terms mm -hmm. of how I get my stats, stuff like that, my CV. So people just on it. Lock, on yeah. it. And, <laughs> yeah. And things were just falling into place. And so before I was just, you know, all football, all everything on the field, on the field, on the field, just doing what I need to do, yeah. practicing training. And but that's you important. Should, yes. That's very important in terms of your delivery and your yeah. performance. But football is a lot more than just on the field matters. There's a lot going behind the scenes in terms of you know your networks, in terms of your your marketing yourself, because that's how people know you. That's how people. That's how people reach out to you because they, 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 they see people. They see. Um, they want your CV. They want to check the stats. They want to see your videos. It's very difficult to get um, opportunities if you don't have that because people. Uh, they are not just in the Caribbean looking around for players. Like I mean, if, if they are going, they're going specifically for one yes, player to yes, see. Yes. Yes. It's not just random. Yes. Um, or if they hear if your name is out mm -hmm. circulating stuff like that. 
So she helped me a lot with that, with that part. Um, and because of that, I was able to get a lot of the opportunities that I got. And because of that, I was almost able to build kind of like my brand and my name and, you know, um, yeah, just give a proper compliment. Of course, of yeah. course. Good representation, good representation of yourself. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's a brand, you know, um, so you have to make sure that the brand is 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 top notch and you know visible to who it needs to be visible to. So bring us to um, Juju to um, the most recent um, opportunity that you received in Scotland and how that came about. Okay. Um. So again. So we, 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 we saw that like, we could not, um, it was almost very difficult for me to play football abroad, especially in, in Europe and in the UK, we got restrictions and stuff like that. And we took our time, we got married, we got my visa, and we decided to explore that market now. Um, and we went to the UK, um, and, I, and I thought it would have been a while because, you know, I'm new, I mean, I'm, I'm, my name is kind of in the Caribbean, Dominica, yes. but it's not that yes, <laughs> right. of people. So I started to do my stuff, you know, just play around, like little friendly, stuff like that, just so that people could see me. And um, the other guy, Graham Walk, who immediately had an eye for me and he was just like, you want me to play for his team? Okay. Um, and then when he, he looked at my my, um, my experience and he saw my CD, I was like thinking, like, oh, I can actually play for Because he was in like my juniors. And he was actually um, very good. Like he was very very good to me that he sent my CD out um, for me and he had a lot of um, links and stuff like that which was a real blessing and within a week he messaged me to tell me that I was interested that would break the CD um, and it was because of my CV again, the same CV that <laughs> So your wife knew what she was doing she all what, along? She knew what she was doing? She knew what she was doing because of that same CV breaking had a look and they was like okay they're interested, they want to have a look at me in training because they, now they need to see if what's on the CV matches the person, right. it's not just <laughs> fabricated stuff. So, um, and I went to that, had like two training sessions and then confirmed. And then we started the paperwork, signed, and then by the next day, I had a game. I had a coffee with them, yeah. They came on, I, I did what I was the very first. Uh, yeah. Did you score the first game? Oh, oh, so that was the first team I actually joined. I didn't score my debut. Really? Every other, team, <laughs> oh every other team that I played with, I scored on my debut. Okay. I, was, I really wanted to, but I, yeah, I kind of broke there. Okay, no, 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 <laughs> yeah, but I'm broke. sure you still played very well. Yes, I, yes, I um, gave a good train of myself and they were very impressed. So by when did we start scoring the goals? So we started scoring the game? games actually on my fifth game. Like, Your fifth game? Yeah, I was four it, games in. It probably took you a little time just adjusting to oh, your environment. Definitely, because in the Caribbean, it was just adjusting to style of play. Mm -hmm. Everything else was kept pretty much the same, but when you go from playing games 20, 25, 26 degrees to playing a game at 6 degrees, mm -hmm. it's completely different. The way the ball moves on the pitch, the atmosphere, like um, getting up off every single thing, even even down to your toes. Like I can sometimes I can't even feel my toes in my foot. Yeah, okay, it's 6 degrees. I'm playing games where hail is falling, like it's, it's completely different. The, the, it's the level of physicality. Completely, it was just completely different. So it took me like about four four games to actually go and score, get on the score sheet. And I still did a few things well, you know, mm -hmm. set up some assisted, mm -hmm. had some good um, um moments in the game where I, I played well. Mm -hmm. And the, the I think the manager um, Andy Kirby always told me like you know what, like, he's getting he's not getting the goal, but he's getting everything else. So he was like just, you know, just be patient. And then one of those games he, he rested. Yeah, he, he had me on the bench and I came in and I actually got that goal. <laughs> so you were like, ah, oh, finally. <laughs> finally it happened. Yes, and then... I remember and then, Dominicans being pretty excited for you though, yes. um, for that. And um, we're at a stage now where you're moving on to another, another club. So tell us, you know, how things wrapped up with that other club and what, what caused that move to that. Um, what is the club now you're moving to? I'm moving to former team. Former team? Yes, okay. I did, yes. Um, so I did my season with Breaking City and it was, well, my, it was a very, very good season and the fans were on the standouts and yes. they were very, very We saw the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a very good season and then it was one of those things where for me, um, 
so game time for me is the big thing because um you have to know in football it's always about playing to your strengths and not only on the field but on the pitch as well and at my age um it's, it's not a, a young age in football mm -hmm. so me being on i did I, I i we had a lot of strikers a lot of quality players and stuff like that and me being on the bench did not help my case because at that age i have experience i have a lot going for me and, and youth and, and opportunity in terms of age is not one of them so i needed more game time um, and that is something that um, after after speaking to the coaches at former team, um, the manager, because because um, it was always the only thing for me to be Alex six strikers that week, and at former team I got the the confidence that I've got more game time, which is very very um, difficult for me. Um, former team is also in my city, it's not really very convenient, baby on the way. Yes. I need to be yes close close um, as well. Um, and they made me an offer I, I, that I couldn't refuse. Okay. Um, so it was, it was ideal in that sense. Um, and I, at that point, and it's a very good team as well. It's a very, very, very good team. We played them in the league. We beat them one time, they beat us the other time. It was a very, very good team. And it's just one of those things where I just decided that not every, um, what should I say, not every ideal situation is not always ideal for you. Right. So Breaking City is a very, very good club, mm -hmm. very structured, very organized, very Mm -hmm. Very good, but when I look at my current situation, I think that the format in the would be a better move for me now at this current point, mm -hmm. especially um, with Baby and the Way. And, mm -hmm. and as I said, format in the game is a top team as well. Mm -hmm. So I just think that um, it was just one of those things. Um, one of my concerns um, was always how the fans would take it because they were so, you know, yeah, we were so close and stuff like that. But it's just one of those things that I have to do for me. And, and fans respected it. Yes. Um, a lot of messages missing me well and stuff like that. And it was just a smooth transi transition, Good. which I that's, that's what I wanted. That's yeah, that's why I didn't want any bad blood um, because I said I was treated properly yes. Yes. Um, off the pitch. Um, and even on the pitch, again, I like the game time for me was going to be um, the deal breakers. What's the, what's the ultimate goal? No pun intended here. <laughs> <laughs> what's the ultimate goal for you, um, Juju? To be honest, um, I want to be at the highest level that I, I, I possibly can. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say it's the league above, I'm not going to say it's the Premier League. Because throughout my entire journey, I had no control over it. It was always about mm -hmm. um, directing myself, so I'm not going to try and put my hand in it. Mm -hmm. um, the time that I put my hand in it, I've kind of made a mess of it. So, to be honest, I'm going to do what I can, and I'll go to the rest. And as I said, I'm happy. And that for me is important. Cool. I think we'll do that. Yeah, yeah that's that that that. that. So Juju, we're really excited for you um, in terms of your move to that new club. And I think um, anyone who listens would understand why you would make a move like that. It being closer to home, a baby on the way and all of that. And like you said, you know, um, God has directed your path so far. And I guess it's left to him to see, you know, how far you get yeah. from here on. But let, let us come back a little closer to home. Um, you've been part of the national team um, for some time. Um, tell us about your your, your, your local background. Um, you played for Bathurst. Did we talk about that before? I'm not sure if we did. So let us talk about your your, your, your start in terms of local. My starting local um, is, is Bathurst Ambassadors. Um, that was a team from Bathurst Virginia. Um, that's where I started. That's what First chance on me giving my opportunity. Um, that's who, that's who, that's how Dominican knew me um, in terms of local football. It was through Bafford Ambassadors. So that's who I um, made my name, I should say. Bafford State came kind of later. Mm -hmm. um, that was after when um, I that was like probably 2011, maybe. Um, but I started back probably 2007, so something somewhere about. Um, so I. Pretty bathroom ambassador. Oh, I played for a lot of <laughs> local teams as well. Where people were saying that I was abusing the system because above when you when you a certain age you could play in the different divisions. So I played I had a team in All Ireland, first division. And <laughs> you so, love the game. Yeah, I love the game. the game. I just played the game. Um, but yeah, I played with Bathroom, um, few other local teams around, 
um, and then I signed with Bath Passage City after because at, by then I think Bath Road as well had had um, him had kind of dissolved. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't hear much about them again. But I played with Bath City for that period. And Bath City for me was always going to be the next natural option mm -hmm. because even in terms of academy, I went to the Winter Academy in Bath City. Um, even in terms of football, I always used to go Bath City and play Bath City players from the garden. So with that, I would have that close relationship um, directly related to Bath City. So it's always going to be back and um, I've been in Bafisit for the past, yeah, past however long. And, yeah, that's the next team that's um, and, in Dominica. And you may say, uh, which one of the teams you played for? I know they, they were some different names. Oh yeah, so there was, I played for Mouse of the Strikers, I played for Young Rivals, I played for um, Trafalgar. I can't remember if it was Trafalgar or anything. I think it was Trafalgar. I played for... PFA Youth Stars. I, I God, you have a lot of football on there. Yeah, I've, I've played, oh, yeah. There. And I think I've missed a few, but okay. I can't remember everything right now. Okay, that's all right. Yes. And in terms of the national team, you've been part of the national team for how long? Since 20. I was a part of it in that game against Barbados when I was on the bench. So I would say I actually made my debut and actually okay. properly been a part of it from 20. 13? Okay. Yes, that's when I played in the first in the tournament that we had here. Was it 2013 or 2014? I think it was 2014. 2014, I think it was, yeah. It was, yeah, March of 2014, yeah. So I played for the national team for 2014 to now, so that's like eight years. Eight years. And, and being part of the national team, what has that experience been like for you? The national team was always my, one of my um, goals, always, like, because I always wanted to represent Dominica. Um, I mean, I've seen guys represent Dominica, and again, I always that was always something that was always the level that like, at the highest level of the country and the for the country to be um, in a proper, proper representation. And um, I've, I've been through a lot of coaches, I've been through a lot of different players, and it has been, it has always, one thing I can say that's always been a close knit group, it has always been a brotherhood. I mean, when I was younger, I was one of the youngest players, so it was not always my peers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I will say that I was always, like how we are Dominicans, always warm, always welcoming, always like almost like a brother would you have my back, have your back kind of thing. Um, we didn't always get the results because, again, the, we don't have enough um, structure in the in our system in terms of um, those that put youth teams and we can always compete based on talent, mm -hmm. but at one point then you have to transition to um, the more tactical side of things and, and, and more structured football and continuity after you finish at a, at a youth level, how do you now progress into a, a career, how do you progress into um, um, the other aspects of the game, um, the technical side and the tactical side of the game. So, um, I would say it, it's, it's been, I think it, it, even our under 15 team was one of the best things I've been in, in terms of structure and, 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 and quality and players I should say and, and maybe it's about the same thing I said before where everybody's talented and stuff like that at the time but I don't know I've been in and out a lot so um yeah and then we have not we have a team now where we have the team of country that yes. we should address so many issues that we had um so it was it's, it's been a, a very up and down kind of journey but it's been it's been a it's interesting been a one it's been a good one obviously you just came from two draws um one loss in the CONCACAF Nations League um you scored the goal for Dominica yeah I scored one yeah in the second game the second game um did you in terms of the the national league and and you you return to play and to support uh, what do you think is wrong or uh, what do we need to do to, to get over that that um, winning table. <laughs> I mean, I think I think it's it's a very um, it's a lot of things um, in terms of a lot of different areas that you have to touch on. Mm -hmm. and I think one of them, I mean, right, which right out of our doorstep is our quality of football locally. Mm -hmm. I mean, that plays a big part. Um, and to, to change that quality of football locally, then we need to adjust some of the things like if you can get better fields. Mm -hmm. Because if you have proper fields, then you can play proper football because it's, it's not easy to play a competition. Um, 
if you speed up a bit a lot slower, you pause your, your touches. Um, though people may say that, oh, um, you should be good anyway, but you have a disadvantage, you almost start you're almost running a race with 10 with um, pong widths on, and everybody else is, is, is free. You, it's, it, you can do it, but it's a lot more difficult because I have to do it too, but it's a lot more difficult. And, and people are at different levels, people are different levels of um, motivation, people are different, you know. So, I mean, it's, it's almost like we're always at a disadvantage. So I think the level of um, our facilities in terms of pitches is one of them. Again, in terms of structure, structure in the, the system so that we have youth, youth players from the, from, the, from the academy level of pushing the academies both into going to something else and then into senior team, like that structure. Again, the players' motivation or their interest in developing their craft is through. They're not feeling like, you know, they don't have that motivation, they don't have the facilities but I think also players have that on themselves to develop themselves so that you can give a proper um a yourself and then obviously that would the overall level. And the other thing too is um tapping into overseas based players and getting players from the outside who probably have more access or probably have um more put I should say more um, facilities probably exposed to more of that so that they can bring some of that outside um, and then again Coaches as well, having coaches qualified and 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 in, in positions that they can now contribute. And it doesn't necessarily just have to be a national senior team, but even in local clubs. So that that so it's, I think it's about um, developing our local pro, um, product and giving a proper product locally, so that then that can now transfer into the national team and, 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 and give a proper representation representation of Dominica. But it's a, it's a lot of things. Um, that I think we need to take one step at a time, but we need to take a step. We need yeah, to do something. Too much conversation. Yeah. And, and, and then, of course, for the opportunities that like you've received, for that to also be open to some of, of our national players as well, in terms of getting the opportunity to play in clubs, uh, for clubs overseas. Yes. Um, I mean, with you, I am not sure who else has a, that opportunity, but it's definitely not too many um, coming for Dominica. Uh, we we'll probably have to like, you know, Glenn Prince, Brian Thomas, Anthony Frederick Addison, well, Chad Butcher. Yes. Oh, but there were a few players who went to college in America as well. Okay. Um, so yes. that, that's, that, that's a well, But it, it's, it's stuff like that that I think that will help. Um, and again, it's the mentality because growing up, I always knew, like, all the issues that we have now, mm -hmm. I always had that to back of my mind, knowing that all people saying that association is not good and that so you cannot focus because focusing on it doesn't help it, it, we know that already we have that information um so it's just a matter of seeing what you can do first of all go to the gardens and i have to take my brother and my friend practice that you just have to do what you have to do what you have to do yeah um will we see you continuing to um take the field for dominica in the future well definitely um i feel i feel good um i think when that time comes, I think obviously I, I, I don't know because football is something that you will feel, your know, body will tell you. Mm -hmm. And I, I still feel like I'm 20. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I still feel good. Like um, and yeah, I still feel I have a lot more to give in the game. And I'm still going to continue. Um, like I will, I will continue regardless of, um, of, of anything. Um, so it's just a matter of when that time comes out. Who inspires you in the field, and um, what are your your what teams do you support? Let's say in the Premier League and in the World Cup and so on. Just on a lighter side. Okay. Um. Well, the team I support, I can't say too loud. Um. It's a team. <laughs> it's the red side of Manchester. <laughs> but we're not. We're not. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're not doing too well now, so I can't speak too loud on that. Oh my goodness. But it's the red side of Manchester. So that's Manchester United. <laughs> All right. At least I do something. <laughs> um. Manchester United. Um. I, I I mean when you have guys like Messi and Ronaldo, there's, that's a no-brainer. That's the guys that at the top of the game. Um, but for me growing up, it was Samuel Eto from Cameroon. Mm -hmm. He was my inspiration in terms of yeah, being on the beach. There, even so, that there was a guy from Essen. I can't. I think his name was Edgar. I can't remember his name. He always called me. Up till today, called me Samuel Eto. Oh, is that? <laughs> yeah, so? because I don't know if he says that I resemble or plays like him or whatever. But he always called me that. Um, and when obviously, it comes to World Cup. World Cup. This oh, you have to be France, yeah. France. You have to be France, yeah. Um, obviously, I want Messi to win the 
of the board. I know. <laughs> might be a difficult one, yeah. but out of board France, um, too. And in terms of otherwise, and again, general, generally, and just being around football, again, it's my brother who got me ah, you into it at the game. Him. Cannot, yeah, it's, it's, it's he who had me. If, uh, if it had not been for him, I would not be here. Okay. I can tell you that. So that one again is one of my, uh, always being one of my biggest. All right, so um, I, I, I'm not sure if we left, we left out anything of importance that you would like to share with us, Juju. Before, um, before we wrap oh, up. Yeah, that's one thing I, I, yes. good thing I just remembered. I mean, in terms of, you mentioned what can you know people do and stuff like that to help the level of football and stuff like yes. that. I think that parents have a very big part to play as well. In like, especially young players, um, growing up because my mother literally never missed one of my games. And it's something that, I mean, you might not think too much of it, but just knowing she's there, just knowing that she supports you and that alone it's almost it's just some comfort, it's just comfort and it's just um just knowing that you're more on the back and that helps a lot. So I think um the little things like that and a lot of the um very good players they have that support from their parents. So if anything, like even if you don't have the finances, just be there, go to the games and just encourage them and do what you can to help them and I think that little things like that will help with the same product that we're speaking about. Mm -hmm. I'm still very dominated. So everybody has to play the part. Julian Wade, aka Juju. Um, I must say that uh, it's the first time that we've had the opportunity to speak on that level, and I like the person that I, I got to experience today. Um, I really do want to wish you well um, in your future endeavors. I think there's still more great things to come from you. Um, I want to extend my best wishes to you and your wife. I hope that she has a very safe delivery and that, you know, whatever it is, a boy or a girl, that it's a healthy baby and that's all that's going to matter. And I do hope that you get the opportunity to experience fatherhood and all the joys that it brings. Thank you so much for um, taking some of your time um, with us on this Saturday. I know you have other things to do, um, so I really do appreciate it. And I hope that the audience will appreciate our conversation because I was pretty happy with it. And I think it was a very good conversation. Um, no matter where it is that you get, how far you get um, in this wonderful field of football that you've loved from the time you were a boy. Um, if you have anything final to say, I'll give you the Yes, and um, I'll just begin by again thanking you so much for um, reaching out um, because that, I mean, sometimes you, you have a journey and you, you go for things, and then sometimes just people reaching out and touching base, like you kind of feel some form, I don't know, of compassion or satisfaction some form of like you have somebody has even seen the opportunity to reach out and to find out your story and I am I'm, I'm very grateful I mean I, I mentioned before the show like my wife and I by extension I end up watching because she's watching it <laughs> we always look at your show and I really like what you're doing and I think it's a very very positive thing um, that is something that it's, it's very very difficult for people to do um, to give flowers or to recognize people especially locally and people in their own town so I think it takes a lot of humility even on yourself and like to do something like that on a regular because I can tell you as, as much as it looks like it's just an interview it takes a lot to even reach out to That's people and to me. give people <laughs> yes. um, that kind of recognition so again I, I, I really hope that I don't know but you have your chance to be in the spotlight because you, what you've done yeah. one I of mean, those days <laughs> yeah I mean people take it for granted but this thing matters Again, thanks for having yeah. me. Safe journey back to the UK. Thank you. Alright. Bundle bundle. Yeah. Bundle bundle. Floor. Bundle 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 bundle. Save. Tap up, tap up. Yeah. Tap up, tap up. Mad. Tap up, tap up, tap up, tap up, tap up. Look at the place covered. Look at the place covered. Rose all you want. Rose all you want. Win big with Flow, iPads, smartphones, vacations, breakfast fed tickets, data, and over $15,000 in cash. Activate a 3, 7, or 30 day prepaid combo plan. Pay up your bill. Switch to Flow. Bundle up for your chance to win every day. Bundle, bundle, yeah. Bundle, bundle. Bundle, 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 save. Tap up, tap up, yeah. Tap up, tap up, man. Bundle now and get a smartphone for free. Switch now.
Our thanks to the insurance company of the West Indies, protecting the Caribbean for over 50 years. Click, call, or visit for your quote today. Josephine Gabriel and Company Limited, agents for Barefoot Wine, Twapita Water, and Heineken Beer. We forward the Freight Master, faster and reliable shipping to the islands. Flo Dominica, enjoy six times more speeds and 50% off mobile when you bundle. Kalalu House and the Great Old House for the finest dining in Dominica. And Media Links, Media Links is Media Links.